Okay, uh, welcome everyone. Welcome to Friday or what week is it? Oh, week five. Um, five weeks with CS10 Demi. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, just a quick reminder, tomorrow is the last day for our assignment. I believe most of you have submitted your assignments, but for those of you who haven't, please uh, don't forget to submit your assignment. Okay, so a little about today. Uh, today we'll be talking about tuples, lists, and iterables. Um, since this is a topic that I consider to be very important in um, this course, so I just want to make sure that we lay the foundations right. Lah. So what's going to happen is that um, I'll mainly focus on the first three parts of this tutorial. So uh, under list mutation. And uh, if we have time, uh, we'll go into part four, the burger meal order. So from experience, uh, we had time to do like, uh, we had time to do tuples, list, other list mutation. For burger meal order, sometimes we have, sometimes we don't have time. So we'll see whether we have time or not. But regardless whether we have time or not, I believe that if you have learned the first three parts, I think you can do the part four by yourself. Because part four is basically just an application of what we learned in part one, two, and three. So today, uh, also like what sets it different is that today we're learning more on the syntax. We're learning more on the Python language itself rather than learning the logic of doing things. In, in a sense, like there's no like clear distinction between the two, but today we'll be learning more on the characteristics of a list, set, dictionary, uh, tuples, and how we can actually implement them and incorporate them into our algorithm. So I think before we start, I'll just do a quick uh, review. Uh, quick summary of the, the iterables inside Python. So, <clears throat> my apologies. Uh, okay, so in Python, there are objects called iterables and um, iterables are basically like, some people would love to say it's sequences. Because they are basically uh, similar things. Like basically, they are an object that can store many things. So imagine it as a locker, la, a locker where you can actually, there are multiple compartments or multiple boxes where you can store things. Or perhaps like an airplane with multiple, with hundreds of seats where it can actually store many people in it. So there are four types of iterables or sequences that you will learn in lecture. The first one is a tuple. And second one is a list. Third one is a dictionary. And fourth one is a set. Set is somewhat a different one. It's quite unique. So mo for today's tutorial, we'll focus on tuples and lists. But regardless, I'll explain all. So, so tuple is actually like uh, the, is the most basic one out of all these four. So if we have a tuple, right, it's like, you know, imagine we have a locker that stores our values in it. All right, and then uh, the locker has a label or an index. So the label or an index, right, is um, follows the standard numbers. Uh. So in this case, uh, it has each locker has a label or an index, which is the standard number, uh, the way you index normal things. Now, with tuple, right, it's so basic, right, that you cannot do a lot of things with this. You cannot say you have a, the fifth item that you want to insert to your tuple. You cannot do that. You cannot also remove components from tuple. So like once the item is in, it cannot go up. You cannot change what's inside the locker. And it's very rigid. Lah. You really cannot do this. Once you create this particular box, right, you cannot do anything else about it. Now, this may be very constraining, uh, but tuples has its own benefits, which we'll explain later. So when we try to modif modify a tuple, right, what we do instead is we actually create a new tuple with the similar contents and make the necessary adjustments that we need. Now, um, tuples suck, okay? Tuples suck. So that's why uh, in Python, we also have a list. A list, um, when we see graphically, right, is similar to a tuple where you just have a locker, right? 
and you store your objects in it. And the, the index is also a number from zero. Now what makes list awesome is that um, you can actually start modifying the locker, meaning that you can change the content to uh, CS1010. You can also um, add, you can, you know, add a new box in the bottom. I know, sorry, it's a bit too small, but like say E. Oh, but you can just remove an item in its, in its entirety. Or even you can actually, you know, you can do a lot with list. You can actually like remove items. You can change the component, the item inside the locker. You can actually create a new box, append a new box into it. So yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, um, list is the more advanced version of tuple where you can do a lot of things. A list can do whatever a tuple can do. Okay, a list can do whatever a tuple can do. However, with that freedom, right, with that degree of freedom, there are sometimes drawbacks that which we'll explain later. The next we have a dictionary. A dictionary is just like a list. It's very modifiable. You have contents in it. But what sets a dictionary apart from a list is that it's index. Basically, it's index, right? It, unlike list and tuples where its index is from zero and numerical. In a dictionary, you get to set your own index. So I can set it to like alpaca, alpaca, llama, a dog, and 356. So you can set your key index or your keys to anything. Basically, it's like labeling boxes you know with names so that you are not so confused what's the difference between each box um but but there's a but um the index cannot be just like anything the index here should be uh what we call immutable so what does immutable means is that the value should not be able to change for example Tuple is immutable. Well, list is mutable because you get to change it, the value in it. String and numbers are also immutable. So make sure that the thing here over here, the index, is immutable. By the way, this is actually called a key. The thing on the left is called keys, and the thing on the right is called values. Lastly, we have the set. Now the set is a little bit unique because the set does not really have a rigid structure. La. I would say like the set is more like a, you know, like a alphabet suit. So you get to fill it with many items in it. B, 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 like C, C, C. So if this is a list, right, a list or top of apps, the way we show it is uh, like we have A, 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 B, 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 and then we have like C, C, C. Then in a list, I have like comma, comma. But in a set, it's a bit different. In a set, what's gonna show up is actually just A, B, C. Why is this the case? It's because a set is just like a, uh, Somewhat like a yellow page if, or a dictionary or just a list. So like what's the, when you try to add something in, right? If the item is already on the list, you don't add it anymore. It just takes in like what are the members inside this particular data structure or this particular bowl. It doesn't show the number of, the number of items. It just show like what's in it. It doesn't know like how many items are in it or how many is being repeated. So that's a quick review of tuple, list, dictionary, and set, and the different characteristics of each. Um, any questions? If there are no questions, just like give me a thumbs up in reactions. If, okay, if there are no questions, then I'll move on to the next part of the tutorial which is basically your worksheet. So just make sure you have your worksheet around you. 
Um, for this tutorial, um, for this uh, tutorial, I know like some of the questions are quite uh, straightforward. Like for example, print tuple A is going to obviously print this, so I'm not going to prompt you for answers. But in certain junctures of this practice exercise, I'll be asking you for what's the answer and just please answer it on the Zoom chat, okay? So I'll also be monitoring the Zoom chat as well, so please help uh, answer there, lah, okay? So this thing, right, uh, the questions here, I've actually transferred this to Python Tutor, the website that we used last week, because Python Tutor will help us a lot in, you know, visualizing things. Uh, yeah, the profs, uh, yeah, okay. So we'll start from the beginning. Uh, we'll start with part one, uh, right. We'll start with part one. So we have a tuple A, right, which is, oops, my bad. Uh, yeah, I should have removed this. Okay. So we see that we created an object tuple A here, which is a tuple that contains 10, 11, 12, 13, and prints tuple A. Then we have tuple B, yes, a new object, another object, yes, then 10. Next, we have a tuple C, right? Now the question is, what is tuple C? Uh, feel free to answer in the Zoom chat. Let's see if you got it right. I mean, if you run it in your idea, you should have got it right. Lah. Okay. Whatever they wrote, sure. Okay, retweet, sure, Nick, sure. Okay, so I mean, generally, you guys are correct. Um, is combined. I'm pretty surprised that the entire class is actually correct because um, yeah usually this uh, in the, my previous tutorial someone usually got this wrong huh? one or two. So uh, when we try to add tuples up right it's just like adding string up. Remember when we add string up we just like connect the left and the right. So same as tuples because both of them are actually sequences right if you remember. So you just connect the left and the right and together. Okay, so it's pretty cool. Um, so when we print the length of the tuple, it's gonna give us six, because there are six objects inside tuple C. Okay, so I think, uh, Derek. Anyways, um, this one, the next part is actually pretty intuitive, right? The next part is actually just checking like whether um, a value is inside a sequence or not. So we here we check whether 11 is inside tuple A, which it is here. Right, it gives us true. And we also check whether 14 is tuple B, which is not, because tuple B only contains like CS and then 10, so obviously it's not. But what if it's C in tuple C, right? There's C here. Is C in tuple C? Is it true or false? Yeah, someone else. answer true, false, F, for respect, grip, sure. S, U, can. Why not a D plus as well? So yeah, the answer is, uh, the answer is false, because basically what we're trying to do is that we check whether C is, in, C is an element or a member in it or not. So this is not a C, 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 this is not a C. Because this one is actually different. This is not a C, so the, it returns false. So, unlike a string, when we like C, if this is the case, right, C and CS, then this is correct because it will kind of somewhat separate this into two parts. But then in this case, right, CS is considered as like one item that is not separated. Okay. So the next part is. Uh, so the next part is indexing. So the way we index uh, tuples are the same way as we index string. So like if we do like tuple B1 over here, right? Uh, we do tuple B1. So we'll just take the first object log here. So we'll take this part over here, which returns 10, 10. But I think one thing that I want to emphasize is that when it indexes for this, right? When I say like tuple B1, 
what it, do, it does is that it takes this particular box, right? This particular box, like 1, 10, 10. Not only that is that it will actually destroy the box around it. It will somewhat like destroy the box, you know, like a bacteria, like a virus. It will break down the outer shell and just like take the DNA inside. So what it hap what happens is that it just like takes in this and returns you ten ten, and the type is an integer. Okay, so it will not return uh, a tuple of one object, but it will just re give us. Uh, the object inside the box. Okay, so with that in mind, uh, what is tuple D? What is tuple D? What? Tuple D. Tuple D is tuple B0, so at this part, times 4. Okay, so there are so many weird answers. Okay, wrong answer to the wrong question. Yeah, so the answer is uh, actually CS, 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 CS. So as we remember, when we do tuple B over here, like we do this part, this will give us CS instead of C, uh, tuple of CS. This one is wrong. How to say it? This is one. This one is wrong. Wait, I forgot the comma. So it, it will take this one out and times four. Remember when we multiply string, so it will just like be a standard string lah. Okay. It will be treated as a normal string. So in fact, tuple D is not a tuple. Okay, tuple D is not a tuple. So don't treat it as a tuple. Treat it as a string. So be careful. Uh, this one is tricky. Okay. So when we print it, yes, it will result in CSCS. CS. Okay. All right. Uh, next up, we have tuple. So tuple B1 times 4. I think some of you have answered. The answer is 40, 40. Simply because it's an integer and you multiply it by 4. You treat it as an integer, not as a tuple. Okay. Next up, we have tuple E, which is tuple D1 del N. I mean, if this is the case, right, this is a slicing as well. This is basically slicing. So for those of you, this is the same as like, um, say like um, string slicing. So this is a start, this is a stop, and this is like a step. So I, I think I won't just... I won't go long on this. I'll just go fast. Especially tuple D. La. Tuple D is, in fact, a string. So we'll slice it as a string. But just like for your information, you can also slice tuples as well. Okay? So I'll just like skip this part. So yeah. Um, when you do like one till the end, you do S, C, S, C, S. The next one is reverse. This one is jumping jacks. And this one is just like skipping stuff. Okay, so I I do hope like you guys can do slicing together. No, I don't play Mobile Legend. Mobile Legend is toxic. Sorry. Um, next, 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 next. Um. Okay. Uh, next. We have tuple I and tuple J. Okay, we have tuple I and tuple J. Now, before I run this, I want to ask, what's the difference between tuple I and tuple J? Anyone? Yeah, I mean, obviously, like, one has a comma and one doesn't. But, like, what's the difference between these two? Um, okay, correct. So, yes, this is, this in fact is an integer, and this in fact is a tuple. Okay, so I think it's just like a quirk. Okay, so um, I think um, answering the question whether tuples must have commas or not, no. Because when you actually just do this, right, this is actually a tuple. I'll beat an empty one, an empty tuple. 
But when that's uh, something inside, right? Um, I think one thing to pay attention is that this, um, this one over here, right, is actually considered uh, arithmetic brackets. The same brackets that is used in, you know, doing your addition, subtraction. It's just that um, the way it is presented, right, in this question is that because it's among like tuple questions, right, you would think like it's a tuple. Well, this one is actually, uh, well, this one over here, oops, this one over here is an actual tuple. So there's a question whether bracket, comma, bracket is a tuple. Well, there's only one way to find out. We try. I don't have the answer to the universe, but I'm willing to try. Wait, I'm just starting my IDLE. It should take some a while. Okay, so here we have my IDLE, comma, syntax error. I guess why it's a syntax error is probably because like it's it expects something here. So like this is tuple, right? It expects something, but nothing is given. So perhaps like this would be better. All right, anyways, good job. You guys can now spot the difference between a tuple or an integer. See, tuple i is a number one, while tuple j is an actual tuple with an actual box. So yeah, when you multiply tuple i, it will it's just an integer multiplied by four. Well, tuple j while you multiply, it's just like string, so you just concatenate them. Pay attention to the results, where you actually like, just like create more boxes, one, 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 okay? Now, I guess like, um, my, I think I'll just point this out also, like, remember like, why here in, in this particular point, right, tuple j multiplies by four, it creates like four separate tuples, but then, Earlier, right, when I try to multiply by 4 over here, so here, it becomes uh, CS, 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 like this, instead of a tuple. I think uh, one, thing to pay uh, one thing to take note here is that, um, yeah, uh, don't forget that um, tuple B here is a string because you kind of already break the box. While in this case, right, tuple J multiplied by 4, right, you kind of like, you don't take anything out. You don't take anything out, you just like have a box here. And then you just multiply it. Lah. You'll just create more boxes. So like the content itself, you don't really care. You just, what you care is that like you, you multiply the tuple box into the several boxes. While the earlier one is just like CS. So you just multiply the string. So I think that's to point out like, if there's any confusion. Okay. Next up is, we have a very interesting part is the maximum and minimum. So when we have a long sequence, right, and sometimes we just want to find the minimum value or maximum value. I know like you can create a for loop to find out which one is the minimum value or the maximum value, but then it's going to be very tedious. So Python has this fu awesome function to do minimum and maximum. Okay. So I think it's quite intuitive to use. So like a uh, minimum of tuple A is 10, but a uh, minimum of tuple Maximum of tuple is 13, correct, right? Now my question here is that um, does printing a tuple needs the brackets? Yes, you need the brackets. Because the brackets kind of indicates like the, the type of uh, data structure. Whether it's a tuple or with tuple with a bracket or a list with uh, uh, square brackets. Or perhaps a set with a dictionary or a set with curly brackets. Okay, anyways, if you pay attention here, right, I commented this part out because this part will actually produce an error. Why is it? Oh, okay. It's not none. Yes, yeah, it's not none. It produces an error. So uh, the reason it produces an error is that because yeah, as some people pointed out, uh, the data types inside the tuple is not consistent. So yes, I think the great thing about Python is that inside the data structure, 
you don't have a you don't need a fixed data type unlike java or c++ where inside the array everything should be the, of the same type but in python you can do mixtures and that's the problem lah. when do you do mixtures you cannot really compare string to an integer etc so when you use this particular function right maximum or minimum make sure that you actually um make sure that all the data types are consistent in fact in fact it is generally desirable to have the data, the objects inside the data structure to be consistent. Because if it's not consistent, it means that you're using it in a quite a weird way. Okay. So uh, I think there's a question earlier. Uh, where is it? Uh, like, what's the difference between list, tuple, and array? Okay. Um. I think I explained earlier what's the difference between list and tuple, but in a nutshell, a, tup, a list is basically the, the, what to say, uh, the tuples on steroids. It is more capable. Tuple is more primitive. Once you create a tuple, you cannot do anything with it. And an array is, Python does not, uh, Python does not have arrays in a sense that list and tuples are their arrays. Uh, arrays, I, I understand where you're coming from. Arrays are more common when you're in C++ or, or in Java. And usually in C++ or Java, right, their array is uh, equivalent to list. Their arrays are equivalent to list, albeit with different behavior. So yeah, there's no list in Python. There's no arrays in Python. Like when we mention array, when we say array, right, we use that term interchangeably with list usually like an array of numbers or an array of strings. Okay, I'm losing track of the chat. Wait, what is arrays? Don't bother. Okay. Well, MA1505, MA1505 is calculus, is it? Oh, dead. Okay, SU, SU. Just as you calculus, calculus sucks. Anyways, we can do uh, tuple e. Tuple e is this. So if you pay attention here, tuple e is actually a string. So when a string you put it inside maximum or minimum, it will somewhat break down the string. It will break down the string. So s c s c s. It will break down the string as individual character. And maximum and minimum will treat it that way. So in this case, the smallest character is C. So it will print minimum as C. And the maximum will be S. Okay. Anyways. Uh, I'll go to the final part for tuples, which is uh, iteration. Lah. Basically, uh, just like Remember when we did the burger question two tutorials ago, one or two tutorials ago, you can actually look through a string, right? Because like for variable in sequence, and then you like you like do something. Right. So in this case, right, if in uh, in the previous tutorial, thanks, I'm a cool teacher, I know. Um the sequence is a string. But then like a sequence can be anything else and we have agreed earlier on that tuples are considered sequence. So you can also include tuples here and then iterate through the value. So pay attention, pay attention here, there will be a cre created new variable which is i, right? And the value of i will be assigned to cs because yeah, it will iterate through each object inside cs, right? And then it will print i, and then it will now iterate to the next value of tuple, which is 1010, right? It changes, and now it will print 1010, okay? So you can also iterate through the value of a sequence of a tuple. Okay, so um, any questions? And this one is serious, like, do you guys have any questions for tuples? If there are no questions, uh, perhaps give me a thumbs up. Uh, thumbs up, everyone, maybe, like, if there are any questions. 
Optional questions and training questions are harder, of course. Uh. Can tuples pass value? Uh, what do you mean by passing value? Oh, max and min C. Oh yeah, for the part on min and max C, uh, basically, uh, okay, just basically right, for minimum and maximum, right? Uh, why is it commented out? Because it will produce an error because in tuple C, there are several different data types. So when you want to do minimum and maximum, the data types inside your tuple should all be consistent or the same. If you change tuple in a function, does the global tuple also change? Uh, maybe you're referring this to list because remember tuples, tuples, right? You cannot change tuples. Once a tuple is created, right? You cannot do anything with it. So like what's uh, this object, right? Tuple A, we have created this particular object, Tuple A over there, here, right? You cannot do anything with it. You cannot change it. Unless, unless, like, uh, where's my string? Uh, where's, oh wait, uh, ideally. You cannot change it at all. Unless like, um, you create a new tuple and assign that new tuple into a new variable, Tuple A lah. So if I have a tuple within a list, I can change the positions of tuple. Yeah, kind of. So say we have a tuple A here, which is uh, one, one, two, three. So we have a tuple A. We cannot change the value of tuple A here. Like, you cannot. You can. It doesn't support type assignment. So what you can do instead is like, you know, tuple A, like, um, maybe like, uh, tuple A plus A, A, B, C. Now this is, this is possible. And what you need to know is that this is actually a completely different tuple from this one. It's not the same tuple. It's a new tuple. Can you list tuple, change the list, and tuple list? Yes, you can. In fact, someone did that for assign for the part four of the tutorial question. Yes, you can list a tuple, change the list, and then tuple list. That's possible. But then it kind of defeats the purpose of a tuple. And yeah, someone did that. Um, if I have a tuple within a list, can I can change the positions of the tuples? Yeah, kind of. So there are other ways to do question four, yes. Why doesn't print tuple J4 gives me one, 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 one? Oh, basically if you have more than one item, you don't need the last comma because basically um, you kind of already know like it's a tuple. When the item is one, when there's only like one item only right inside the tuple, then you are quite unsure like, whether the brackets indicate a tuple or not. Hence, that's why there's the comma. So yeah, you, answering your question, Qing Yi, like you don't need the comma at the end. If you cannot, okay. okay. I'm a bit lost, guys. Uh, maybe like help tone down the chat because like I'm a bit lost with the questions. Okay. Anyways, identity theft is a crime, Jim. Okay. Um. All right. Good. That we got the answers. Questions answered. I think some of you already kind of touched on this. But before we go to this, we will have a very easy exercise on this particular part. Range. I know you guys, most of you have been dealing with range. But then, like, um, shh, okay, it's a bit too big. But yeah, all right. Most of you have been dealing with range in your for loops. In fact, you can see it right now, for loops. But then, you guys never really truly understood what range is. In fact, range is actually a sequence. Lah. Okay, so this particular thing, right, will create a range from 0 to 4, if you remember. So by, def by default, right, by default, when the range is a function that creates a sequence or a list or an iterable. So if there's only one number over here, right, this number is considered the stop point. With the default start at 0, and the default step is 1. If we have two numbers, then we know that this is the start and this is the stop. 
And if we have three numbers, basically we have the start, the stop, and the step. And also just like we start at slice string, when the step is negative, we move backwards. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. So we'll just start. Um, for question A, I'll answer it for you. It's definitely 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So the question is, what's the answer for question B? Just type it in the chat. No need to enter. Just like answer it in one line. Please answer it in one line. Okay. Yes, the answer is 2, 3, 4. So like we have 2. Since we don't have the step, we'll set the step default as 1. So plus 1, 3, plus 1, 4, plus 1, 5. But then 5 is the stop point. Because this is the stop point, we'll exclude that part. Ooh, okay. Cool. Next up, we have C. No, I mean like for this ex for this exercise, just answer it in one line. But in reality, yeah, you'll get like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4. What's the answer for C? Yes, it's 2, 4. So we have sub at 2. Yo, what the fuck did hap what this just happen? Okay. 2 plus 2, it's 4. Plus 2, it's 6. But then 6 has exceeded our stop point. And so we cancel this part. Okay. Next up, we have question D. What's the answer for question D? Will there be a comma between 2 and 4? It's No, there's no comma. This one is, remember, we're just printing. Okay? So uh, it's just print. So yeah, um, print in different lines. Okay, so yeah, we start at 5. Minus 1, which is 4. Minus 1 is 3. Minus 1 is 2. Minus 1 is 1. But then 1 is our stop point. So we'll exclude them. Be careful, ah. We don't include them. And when things are reversed, right, things are a bit wonky. This one is still the inclusive. And this one is still the exclusive one. Okay. So with that, uh, we'll move on to the next part. What's question E? What's the answer for E? There's only one answer, nothing. Anyone? Any other answers? Yes, so it's it basically doesn't answer anything, okay? So for for the record, right, this will not produce an error. Okay, there will be no error. This is actually perfectly valid. It's perfectly okay. But then when we start counting, right, we do five. Five has already exceeded the stop point. Hence it will immediately be excluded and we stop. Okay. Oof, that's quite mean. Mixed brain, nothing. Quite mean. Alright. So that's with range. In fact, if you want to see that, if you want to, if you want proof that range actually is an iterable, we can do it. I mean, range on its own, it, it, you cannot do much about it. So you cannot do much about it. But when you convert it into a list, then you can actually see it lah. Or perhaps a tuple. Yes, you can actually see that it generates the numbers. Uh, no lah, I mean like, hi Hong, just don't worry. Don't worry, it's just like, it will print nothing. It's not none, it's not what, it's just, it prints nothing. It's not even empty string. It prints nothing. It, the, this code doesn't execute. It did not get executed at all. Because it's an empty list. Lah. Okay. Anyways. So it's just like, don't worry. Lah. Those are just like minor. Alright. Any questions? Any questions for range? If there's no questions, we'll move on to the next part. Which is list. List is the more difficult part. So I guess when we deal with tuples, right, there's, uh, you pay attention that there's, you know, like these dots and arrows pointing to another box. These are quite important lah, when you see later in list. So yeah, I have actually moved the list questions here. Yeah. 
I just make this smaller a bit. Oops. All right. So we have this. Uh, we have uh, CS ten ten E over here. So I think if we print it, it's obvious. It's gonna be CS ten ten. Print list A. Print list B. Now, if you see here, right, it's pay attention that uh, list B, right, goes here, and then when it creates the object list B, right, it, there's another dot inside that actually points out to another tuple, an object inside this object space. Okay. Next up, we have list C. So, what is the output of list C? Anyone wanna try? What's the output of list C? Yeah, there are some, some answers. So if you see the answer is actually uh, the one who, that answered this. Uh, so uh, this is the answer. CS 1010E is easy. So remember that this one, this object over here, like same, the way we add lists are like the way we add strings. However, if you see over here at this particular point over here, it's actually copying the tuple. Uh. It doesn't break the tuple. So in this case, the list has four elements. Okay, but then I think there's some interesting part over here that I want you guys to pay attention is that instead of like copy, creating a new tuple and pointing it here, you know, creating a new object, in fact, it actually points to the same object over here. These two points, right, actually refer to the same object. We'll explore more of the, about this later on. So, yeah, um, let's move on first. So next we have a tuple A, right? Uh, CS1010. And then uh, basically this chunk of code shows that we cannot change the value inside a tuple, but we can change the value inside a place. Lah. We commented this out because yeah, we cannot assign a value in tuple A. Lah. So for the sake of it, I'll try a demo. So we have a tuple A. Then tuple A, what's it? One equals to 20, 30. It doesn't work, okay? Because tuple A does not support assignment, okay? But then when you try to assign the value to a list, right? It works. So we have our list A, which changed to 20, 30 over here, yes. So if for those of you who missed it, just pay attention at this particular box, a circle. When I run it, the value changes. Okay. And we print list A, the value change is reflected. Now, uh, I think this is an interesting question, which I think is quite important for you guys to get as well. So we the next part of your question is append and extend, which looks similar, but actually very different. And a lot of you actually got confused in append and extend. So my question is to you guys is that what is the difference between append and extend? Explain in the Zoom chat. Even if you don't know, just give it a shot. So we are trying to append or extend the word easy here. What's the difference? Append is like adding all into one element, so I'll extend means like you expand what is inside the given input that you put into the whole list. Oh, I really love David's answer. So yes, uh, basically, um, I think I'll just run it first so you guys can actually see what's happening. So when we append, see this A, right? This A, so pay attention to this A. 
when we append the word easy, tada, we'll create a new box over here. We'll create a new box, right? I'll just represent it with blue. But then when we try to extend, right, what's gonna happen is it's gonna break into it was gonna break easy into several boxes and extend. Okay, so I think this is important lah. When we try to append, right? Append is basically when we have a when we have a list, right? What append does is that it will just create a new box. Okay, the, the key here is just creating one box at the end and put everything inside of it. Okay, the parameter. But when it comes to extend, oops, my bad, bad color. When it comes to extend, right? X, the X over here, right? Will be converted into a list first. Right, after converting it into a list, it will simply add it to the new list. That's extend. Okay, so for extend, right, the length of the square, right, can be much more than one. Okay, so what about integers? Let's see. There's only one way to know by actually trying. So we have our tuple A, uh, we have our list, list A. Which is like, uh, which is, I think I'll just convert tuple A like a list, okay? So we have list A. We have that then, right? So let's try to uh, let's try to ex uh, append A with an integer. Say like twenty thirty. See it works, okay? When we try to extend it with an integer. 2040 say there will be an error so here you can see the type of error which is type error and the comment here is integer object is not iterable hence we actually learn something new here when we use the function extend right when you use the function extend you should the only input can only be an iterable or a sequence meaning it can only take a string list integers and sorry, string, list, tuples, dictionaries, those kinds of things. I think I have an example here. No, 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 no. Here, here, I have, yes, I have an example. So yeah, um, in this case, uh, let me just throw that away. I'll just show this away. So yeah, this is when we try to append and extend. We have a list, right? We have another list, a list of ABCs. So when we try to up A, B, one, two, three, right? We create a new list, and then when we append, stada, we create a new list, new object list, ABC. And then basically you create a point down here. But then when you extend, you actually just create a new A, you know, you just create more boxes. And just like attach it one by one. But, uh, so that's the difference between append and extend. Okay. Any questions regarding append and extend? If there are no questions, then uh, I think just one more thing. As you can remember, right, append and extend is uh, used to actually like combine two different lists into together. Some of the rookie mistakes was that usually some of you do this list a equals to list a dot append like you know I like guess now what happens with this is actually um, it will actually produce a none instead. So list A, it actually gives us none. Now, why is this the case? It's because like basically this is a function, 
that we'll just give returns a none. Lah. And you know this function, right, will actually edit the list itself lah, directly. So do not do this, okay? Some of you do this because you guys are used to like, if you have an integer a equals to like a thousand and you want to add like 5,000 to a, right? You would do this like a equals to like 1,000 uh, int a plus like 5,000. Usually you guys do this. And sometimes when you try to append or extend, right, you also do this, assign it to a variable. Don't do this, okay? If you want to use the plus sign, so just use the plus sign as well. Uh, be consistent. List A equals to list A plus whatever list that you want to actually append or extend. I mean, if you recall, right, um, it's actually just extend more. This one is extend. You cannot do append with this. So I hope you guys take up that rookie mistake. So don't come to me like, hey, teacher, why I append, I extend, and then like my list is empty. Why is it none? Okay? Because this is wrong. Dead wrong. Yeah, if you plus them together, it's basically extend. But it's, practically speaking, it is extend. But uh, it's not that easy lah. Because um, what happens to extend is right, what happens to an extent is that you are actually modifying the original list. Correct. Well, this one, right, it actually generates a new list, a third list. So like list A and list B, like, you know, like getting married and get a new child and becomes a completely different list. Well, this one, right, list A extend, right, it's basically you have list A and list B and then you take list B and insert it to list A into the same thing. Okay. So yeah, um, We'll continue. Uh, yeah, we're a bit out of time, right? but then we'll continue. Now, the next part of the section, the next part of your question is actually uh, copying. So this is actually a way you copy your list. Um, there's a reason why you copy, um, okay? You copy a list by actually doing this. Uh, if you remember this, like uh, strict sizing, but then the start and the stop is not defined, meaning that it will just immediately start and stop at the end beginning and the end. So where's list B? This is list B, right? So we'll just take E as well and take this dot. Now, if you pay attention, right? Like if it's copies, right? It should be copying everything, but it certainly didn't because the tuple still refers to the old tuple instead of creating a new tuple, copying the new tuple, right? So what happens here is that um, now just be prepared because this is the hard part. To understand um, when you see the global frame and you see the global frame over here and you see the dots and the arrows and the objects they are not designed that way for the sake of like easy to read lah. there's a reason why they are actually like designed in this way there's a reason why the objects is not inserted inside the global frame and instead, the object actually exists in a new realm of the object space. You know, like in the Avengers, this is the space where all the people snap by Thanos school. Okay, there's a reason for it. It's because that <clears throat> inside the global frame, right? Inside the global frame over here, your list, right, and your tuples does not actually contain your actual list of tuples. In fact, it actually contains what it calls what it calls pointers, P-O-I-N-T-E-R-S, pointers. Pointers are basically like addresses to your home, some, to some certain object. So it will save the address to the object that it stores in this magical realm of objects. Lah. Okay, Because basically the global frame cannot fit in like weird objects. So instead, what it does is that it just stores the address to it. So whenever you want to access list A, you'll just like access the pointer and it will lead to another object. Correct. It, it's like redirecting to the other realm of the storage space. Correct. So what happens here is that when we try to copy the list B, right? What we try to copy list B, what we copy here is not the tuple, but what we copy is actually the address or the pointer to the other tuple. This is what we copy. We copy the dot. 
If the realm of storage space considered local scope, no. The, the realm of storage space is actually global, which we will uh, actually see in part three. It's actually global. So yeah. Um, so we'll see more of this in practice. So let's just move on first. So here copy B1 is hard. We'll try to change the value. So what happens here is that I go to copy B, which is a pointer, as I go to that part, and then it asks for one, and then I'll change this to is hard, which if you can see, ta -da. So yeah, if you miss the uh, thing, so yeah, copy B, and then I'll change it to is hard. Hence, it will kind of break the chain, okay? When I print copy B, when I print copy B, uh, we'll print B E is hard and this B is E is easy. Objects can change addresses. Um, no, objects cannot change addresses. Like if once it's initiated in the object space, right, the address will stay the same. However, the global frame, you can reassign this into something else. You can reassign the value of list A, list B, list C to something else. But no, the, once the object is initiated, right, it cannot change address. Okay. So then uh, we'll move on to the next part, which actually like shows you the, shows you the most important part of pointers. Um, okay, so we have this list B, right? So we'll try to create list B. So see, uh, list B creates a new list, one, two, three, and then another object, and it, that ob that list object, right, will be saved as a pointer in this particular list. And then now I create a copy, this D right here. See, an identical copy. What I do is I also copy the address, since both are the same address, we'll point to the same object, right? So I print the copy D and list D, which is exactly the same. Lah. Now, perhaps some of you kind of know where I'm heading towards so right now, is that uh, we're trying to change the value inside this particular box over here. So here we'll try to access list D. List D, which means I'm pointed to this box over here, and then list D1 over here, and one is this thing, right? And then I'm pointed again to another point, which is zero, which is here. And then I'll change the value this to nine. So the value changes to nine, right? Now I'll try to print copy D and list D. Now in fact, if you print copy D and list D, both are one, nine, three. So even in list D, copy D, right? In copy D, it becomes one, nine, three, even though we actually initially copied it over. So what happens here is that it actually, um, this is, a dot right, this is the address. So I access the address, address, address. List D right, list D, uh, copy D right. In fact, copy D has like one address three. So when uh, copy D does not really save the state of the address lah. So whenever there's something changing here, right, it doesn't know and it cannot prevent it from changing. So when you do this particular copy, right, this is what you call a shallow copy. This is what you call shallow copy, meaning that um, you kind of only copy the first layer, but then if there's any other list inside of it, like if it is being accessed through another list or through another address and it's being changed whatsoever, you there's nothing that can stop you from happening from stopping it to change because uh, generally when we want to copy objects right the general um behavior that we want is that uh when we change the first object the original object the copied object should not change and vice versa but in this case it changes and this is what is called shallow copy because if you actually change the value of this right or this or this or this it's not going to change that Oh, uh, if you replace to nine, what won't it be one nine three? Because it actually re it doesn't replace this box. 
it actually replaces this. Remember, like list d one zero is actually list d one is actually this object over here. It refers to this object. It doesn't refer to the pointer. No, actually, it refers to the pointer lah. But then eventually, it refers to this object, and then this particular zero over here actually refers to the content. So in this case, the address, this right, the these things right, will remain as addresses. Point or pointers, because what we're changing right is not the point this box, but what we're changing is actually this box over here. The box inside. Does that answer your question, David? Okay, is there a non-shallow way to copy? Yes, which is called deep shallow. Now, um, I don't have the algorithm for deep shallow. Eh, for deep shit. Why is it deep shallow? Deep copy. Damn it. Deep copy, as opposed to shallow copy. Now, deep copy, right? I don't have the code, and I strongly encourage you guys to do a googling, lah. In quick Google search doesn't hurt, right? So like, perhaps like, deep cop copy Python. So yeah, I think there's a lot of examples here. There's the copy module as well. Okay, so yeah, there's a lot of examples lah. Okay. Anyways. Uh where were we? Yeah, so finally we can actually verify whether it's correct or not. So it's not needed going deep, right? Going deep. Sometimes you need to go deep. Sometimes you need to go deep. That's why there's we set kind of separate like shallow, shallow copy and deep copy because at sometimes you will need to do a deep copy because it's quite important. It really depends on your needs. So yeah, uh, we can actually verify that list whether list list D is actually equals to copy D because content wise is the same. But if you see right. List D is not copy D because list D and copy D are actually two different objects, correct? Two different objects. That's why it's false. But then if you check the content of list D inside at one, right, it's actually true because the value is the same. And list D is copy D one is actually also true because it's actually the same address. They are referring to the same object. So, any questions regarding lists? Don't worry, if you guys got confusion on like how, why is it replaced, why is it not, we'll have like the third part of the tutorial, which is um, the list mutation. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Any questions regarding the list questions? Please ask now if there are any questions. Brain explode already. Careful. This tutorial is actually pretty important, lah. I kind of get it. It's quite messy from the for the drawing. Um, generally, right, if you want to draw it on paper, what you want to do is basically this is you create a list of squares, and basically if there's a, a list or a tuple inside your list, what you want to do is represent them as a dot and point them outwards to a new list. Other one. Okay, why when you copy you use this instead of as indirect assignment? Okay, I think I'll just go to the next question. Okay, all right. Uh, hold your question, Azizan. Hold your question. Um, hold your question. Uh, because that's actually the next part of the tutorial, which is. We have two questions here. So yeah, this is your question, right? List y equals to list x. So let's do this. So I think for those of you who are confused, this is like two examples of list mutation. So in example A, right, what we do is first like we assign x to a value, and then we equate y into x, and then three, we change the value of x. Okay, so this is the general algo for like question 
for the first row. Okay. Uh, right. So I think for the first question, it's pretty straightforward. Right? We do, we assign y x to 1, y to x, and it copies. x is y through change the value x to 2, and then when we print x, y, it changes. Okay? Pretty straightforward. Now, when we come to list, which is actually Azizan's question earlier, this particular point, right? We assign list x to 1, 2, 3, 1, uh, to 1, 2, 3. And if you remember, this is actually a pointer, not the actual object. So when we do list y equals to list x, what it copies is not the object, but it's a pointer. See, both are the same pointers referring to the same thing. So when you change the value of list x0, it will change to 999, and list y will not know anything, because what list y actually has is the address, not the actual object. So when we try to access list x, it will now open the address. List y, same for list y. List y will actually open the address and goes to the object, uh, hence list x is list x. List y is true. Okay. Any questions on this part? Any questions? If there are no questions, maybe thumbs up. I have a feeling that half of you are like, you guys are confused, but you don't know what question to ask. Yes, this x is equal to this one. Okay, uh, explain again. I mean, I mean for this one, it's quite clear, right? It's quite clear why it, this is the way. In fact, this is the way that you have been learning it all your life. All right, this one is the confusing part. Okay. Again, I'll start from the top. List x creates an object, one, two, three, one. And inside list x, inside the global frame, I create a pointer. So list x is a pointer that points to an object. Right? It's an address. And then I assign list y to list x. Now remember, list x in the global frame is a pointer. It's not the object. Hence, List y is equal to the pointer initially. Hence, when we actually run list y, right, it will create a point. It will be assigned to a pointer to the address, to the same address that happens to be directing to the same object. Okay. Then I assign the same pointer here. List x is a pointer, right? But then we are accessing the pointer using this indexing and assign the value to 999. So hence, I go from list x here, go here, go to the zero part, and change it to 999. Right, which is the case. And now, I want to print list x. So I'll, from this point again, I'll go, I'll go here, and then print the entire thing, right? Then now I print list y, which is this same pointer as well, this red dot pointing the same object and print the entire thing again. And now the question is, list x, is list x the same as list y? Well, both of them are the same pointers, the same objects. So hence, list x is list y. Do I need to repeat that again? So what's the diff? Oh, okay. So again, like remember like copy D, list D, right? No, copy D equals to list D brackets, right? It's not the same. It's not, where is it? If you see here, right? Copy D and list D, where's it? Copy D and list D actually points to a different object. These are two different objects. So when you the way you copy it's different lah. Because like it's actually points to this different object. So when you modify copy D, right, it will actually modify this object below. And this object here, this object over here, right, the list D, 
the original list fee is not affected. But then, if you if you happen to be accessing something that both of them share, then it will kind of affect everything that is connected to this thing. Lah. Okay, so it's kind of like a backdoor. Okay. Meaning it's a new list on its own. Yes. Yes, so like in terms of value, use this one is to check value. Like in terms of value, this will evaluate to true. But in terms of is, which checks whether it's the same object or not, it will return false. Because both of them are different objects in the object realm. Yes. It is a new list on its own. It's a new list on its own. It's completely separate. While in our example earlier, is it, uh, this one, it's actually points to the same object. Lah. It points to the same object because both of them share the same pointers. It does not create a new list. It just copies over the pointer. Any questions? Take your time. Okay, if there are no more questions, uh, I think I want to touch something that we mentioned earlier. Someone actually asked whether the object realm is local or global. Uh, that one is actually uh, exhibited well in this particular question. Lah. Well, in this case, right, we have the value A is assigned to something. Then we create a function that function x that basically multiplies x into two. Lah. And then three, we call function A. Four, we'll call A. If you change list B, then copy D changes to no, it doesn't. Because it's a separate object. Yeah, let, let me just move forward first because we're quite a bit tight on, on time. <coughs> so yeah, we have full X. Um, this thing over here. I think this one is pretty obvious. We actually talked about this during uh, during last week, I think, on like function scopes. So yeah, I think it's pretty obvious when we assign A to four global frame, then like foo is, even you see, right, foo is actually a function and that is actually an object that lives in the object space. And foo itself is just like a, a address that points to that. Lah. And then you print A, which is still four, because like, yeah, there's only like four in the A in the global frame. And then when you run foo A, Remember, it creates a new box. Okay, I'll just move forward first. Uh. I'll just move forward first. So that uh, I'll just move forward first and then I'll answer it at the end of the tutorial. Full A, I mean, then like X. This X actually refers to this particular X. Multiply it by 2, 8, and then print it 8. But returns the value none. And because it returns none, the box disappears and we'll print A again because like that's the only thing that exists. If you can see, if you can remember that this variable over here exists in the local space of the function. So yeah. Now going to the list, this is a tricky part. Lah. Okay. This is actually the tricky part. So we have a list, we have created a list. Remember, global A, list A, object. Then we have a function. Oh, wait, this is not the original question, I bet. Da, da, da. You print, normal, right? Then, foo, foo to list A. Now pay attention what's hap what happens here. What happened here as well is actually that <coughs> the input here, right? It doesn't take in the list. It doesn't take in the object, but it takes in the pointer. So this pointer over here, right? is being copied to this pointer over here. Okay. 
So it's just a pointer. And yeah, the thing is this object space, right? It's just like accessible by everyone. So what happens here is that when you do multiplication, right? See, I'm multiplying the list. See, like the pay attention to the value of the list here that is evolved, changing. It changes, changes. I print it. See, I print two, three, four. And then returns the value none, hence the function is gone. But then the object in the object space, right, is already modified. That's when you actually print it again, list A, right, it will access the modified list. Okay, so remember that when you're inserting a list into a function, you are not inserting the list, but you're actually inserting the pointer to the list. Okay, as for those of you who ask whether like the object space is global or local, it's actually global. So it's accessible by anyone. It's just that space that everyone can go la. Like, if anyone watches The Good Place, it's like Janet's empty space. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think if you got that reference, but anyways. So yeah. Um, I don't understand the last line. Why does it access to modify? Oh. Just remember, right? Remember, uh, this function over here, right? this, this function over here, it doesn't accept the object, but it accepts the pointer to the object. And this object, right, is so it's actually like this is referring to the pointer. Lah. Points, point, point, point. And this, actually, this A actually points to the same thing. So it will just like modify, yada, yada, yada. Okay, sorry, my bad, too fast. Uh, so yeah, it actually modifies the actual list because this, this particular point here is just a pointer. And the, the pointer access zero, right? It means that this pointer goes to the object, goes to the home, and then like, takes this and change it to two, change this to four. As it actually is, you know, changing the actual list because that, because that this actually points to the same thing. Hence, once the list is done, it returns the value none. Yes, the function changes the value in the list because it's global, it, it has direct access. As when it press list A, list A, remember list A is only a pointer, so it doesn't really know what's going on inside. So like if something else changes the value inside the object that is this being pointed to, it doesn't really know and it just changes. So I think the moral lesson here is that list is powerful, super powerful compared to tuples, but list has its drawbacks, is that list it's not perfect. La. You can actually modify things and it can you know be unstable la, if you're not careful. It's too powerful that with uh under the wrong hands, it things can go wrong. La. I mean quoting Peter Parker, with great power comes with great responsibility. Okay. So What's the fix to this? I think this is the main question, right? Say you wanna like cr create a new function instead, instead of, you know, like you wanna take a function, you, know, you wanna take a list in, but then you wanna create a new out list, but then you don't wanna modify the old one. So the way is, say, not, okay lah, I think. The way is actually to create a copy. Okay, this is a shallow copy. Or uh, perhaps if you really need to be to make it a whole new different list, then you can always create a deep copy lah. Okay, so when you actually create a shallow copy over here, right? See what happens. I create list A and then full list B, and then see list the current variable list is actually a pointer that applies to the same object. But then here, right, in this particular line, line three, I actually created, I, appoint, I created a new list la, that points to a different list. 
Hence, when I'm doing the modification, it doesn't affect the original list. No, if it's e just equal sign, right? It's not even deep copy. It's just like copying the pointer. Hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, um, deep copy is basically deep copy, right? Meaning that even this, right? Like, you remember list D and copy D, right? If you do a deep copy, you can also like create a list, this particular box, right? Into a different box at all. Yeah, so if you print the actual list, uh, so in this case, uh, when you print list A, you will actually output the actual list still, yes. Okay, don't bother lah. Don't bother about cheap copy then. Like just uh, try to Google, make make a Google perhaps like this one. I cannot explain lah. It's not in the material, but then you might want to learn about deep copy lah by watching YouTube. Yeah, it's not really important now, but I strongly encourage you guys to learn more. Okay, anyways, 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 um, yeah, la, it's, it's not easy to understand deep copy and shallow copy in the first place. La. But anyways, um, we have five more minutes. So apparently we kind of ran out of time. No, actually I'm going to push it. But okay, some of you might need to leave, but some of you who stay, we can actually do burger meal order together. Okay, but then... For those of you who want to uh, leave, I want to share something like, that might be very helpful for your... I'm also hungry. Anyways, that's going to be very helpful for your practical exam, which is called the function help. So type help for interactive help or help object for about objects. So for interactive, you can do help like this. Cool, right? Um, so like perhaps like uh, list, uh, max, it can actually create a lot of help. Lah. And it actually can show you like how to use a particular function if you forget. So at, during practicals, during practicals, okay, during practicals, you cannot access your shell during midterms or finals, during practicals. So, you can in fact like do like help str. Okay, squeeze text, but uh, so yeah, basically you can see that there's a lot of functions that you can do with string that might be useful. For example, like I think find is useful, ends with is useful, count. I think some of you did use count for assignment three, wink, wink. So it's pretty useful. So if say it's it's a bit too long, maybe you want to be more specific, you can do str lower and it will just like be more specific. Lah. Or not, yeah, you can just use the uh, interactive version. Just PE. Finals, finals and midterms, your computer will be locked down and you cannot open anything else in your computer. Okay, enough about the promotion for help. Now, uh, I think I'm gonna take just 10 minutes of your time to actually do burger meal order, okay? So this is the question here, burger meal order. Basically, there are three questions uh, you, that you can see on your tutorial, which is enough money, print receipt, and remove item. Uh, I hope you guys are opening your tutorial worksheet instead of just watching me blabber nonsense. So I think what I want to explain a bit is that uh, now that we have learned about like tuples, lists, dictionaries, and sets, we are able to create like uh, our own like data types. So for example, if we want to create, yeah, printed out the tutorial worksheet to copy down your teachings. Thanks a lot. Appreciated that you print the tutorial worksheets. So in this case, right, say we want to represent a human, right, in Python. We want to have a human in Python. A human has a name, age, and say like personality, right? 
we can actually represent them like maybe like as a tuple of three objects where like the first one, first one is your name, the second one is your age, and your third one is your personality. This is possible. So in this case, maybe for to represent Matthias, right, to represent me, it will be a tuple of my name. My age is 20, and my personality is perhaps arrogant. Okay, this is just an example of implementation. Because once you get to learn less and tuples, right, you can do so many things. So in this question, right, we actually have an option. We, we want to create something that's called an order. An order is represented by a tuple of burgers, where a burger is represented by a string of characters. So an empty burger is represented by an empty tuple. And basically, you have this function to add a burger to order. So for example, we have this particular simulation, where in this case, my order is first an empty tuple. And then we have B, V, P, B. And then we have B, V, P, B. And B, C, P, C, P, B, which is, I think, the Mac thing. So, right, we are, so with this, right, we can actually do a lot of things. So, your challenge is actually to create enough money, print receipt, and remove item. Now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to break you guys into three breakout group rooms. So it's pretty fun, right? Three breakout groups. We each should uh, work on like on one function. So like later on, your breakout room will have the, the name of your function, which you can you need to do lah. Now um, I'll give you like five minutes to come up with the function. I mean, like there's like eight heads. So I think uh, you guys should be able to do it lah in within like five minutes. Now once you're done. Um, once you're done, perhaps like what you want to do is actually uh, share it in code share lah, the answer and then we can discuss it afterwards. Okay, so this is the code share link. Uh, okay, please uh, try to attempt the questions. Ah. Okay, uh, right. 